Alright guys, so I've been hearing a lot of cries for um, Black Ops to return, so here you go. Um, this is a really old gameplay, actually I've had this on my hard drive for quite a long time now. This is back at, I think, the last Nuketown double, uh, double XP weekend, um, or excuse me, Nuketown 24-7 weekend. This was either the last one or maybe even two weekend, or two uh, Double XP weekends ago. So it's an old gameplay. Um, the final score of this game is 90 and 5. Pretty much what happened in this game was, I think I was playing and I either ended up uh, disconnecting by accident, or I had to leave for whatever reason. And um, it's very rare for me to leave a game in the middle of it, but that's what happened in this game. I go uh, 90 and 5 and then I just quit the game. So I thought I'd throw this one up, and there's a reason for it, is because um, you notice a lot of my gameplays, a lot of the longer gameplays that are upwards of 20 minutes long, they might be um, like 150, you know, 160 kills. But the game, the, the problem is the games are like 18, 19 minutes long, and I really hate commentating for so long at once. So there's a couple solutions that I could do to this. One of the solutions is to cut the video in half. But what I notice, and uh, excuse me, and uh, and commentate two parts of that with two different subjects, or just to take a breather in between, because talking for 20 minutes in a row is really painful. Um, the other thing that I can do is I can, or excuse me, and when I when I do that, what I notice a lot of times is that uh, one of the views, or excuse me, one of the parts of the video will get twice as many views sometimes as the second part and it's generally the first part that gets the most views um, I don't like doing that because I, when, pe when I let well, people watch my videos I want to make sure that they're watching the whole thing not just watching part of it so I like to upload them in one piece um, that's why you're not seeing nearly as many of the extremely high scoring gameplays anymore um, if I get an app uh, to be honest I haven't had any people uh, really request them recently I think that people like the smaller uh, scoring videos that aren't nearly as long but once again, if you do want to see those, just leave a comment down below. Uh, contrary to what most people do, I do read every single comment. I'm constantly checking my email, checking my Gmail, and it tells me every single comment. I might not reply to every single comment, but uh, generally I'll reply to at least half of them. You know, if you tell me, you know, good job or whatever, I'll reply thanks. Um, just, I want to let you all know that I am getting that I am getting your feedback. I'm getting, I like the support that everyone's giving me. So if you want to see more demolition gameplays, I've got tons of them on my hard drive. I've got 190 kill games, 200 kill games, 210 kill games. They're all just on my hard drive waiting for someone to actually want to watch them. And I don't mind commentating them, but um, I might split up into two parts. Because this, this gameplay is 9 minutes long, that's about the most I ever want to commentate for at once, um, like in one single sitting. Um, the live commentaries I've been doing recently, and I'm going to continue with those later on, um, I like doing live commentaries because it's spontaneous thinking. Just whatever I think about, you get to hear. And I think that's what a lot of people go to YouTube for, is to learn what, what better players of the game are thinking when they're playing and um, why they do certain things. And I know I get off topic a lot in those videos. I watch them back, I realize that I'll be talking about one thing, and then I'll see something in the game that completely distracts me. But that's kind of what happens in, in your real thoughts. You're like, you'll be thinking about one thing, but then it's if, if I see something that's, that's more, that I think is more important, or that people, should, that people should catch on to a little bit more, then I'll switch uh, trains of thought and go on to that. And um, I get a nice little streak here. I love the demolition spawn trap on this side. This is the best part right here. I actually got a 24-man spray here. I don't think it was in this video, but I know that um, if you watch some of my other Nuketown videos, you'll see um, this place is a monster place to set up with an M60 big ammo. Um, it's almost unstoppable, but they can't. See, they don't spawn looking at you and you can just haul their asses this, the moment they spawn inside the game. And this guy did a very bad thing of dropping an M60 big ammo for me. I did not spawn in with that gun. I ended up just picking it up from him, and that's a ridiculous gun to spawn trap with. Um, right here, um, I call him the gunship normally, and this is why I'm thinking it might have been two Nuketown 24-7 weekends ago, because on offense, I like to get all the kills and then release the kill streaks on the defense side. The reason for that is the defense spawn trap is not nearly as good, and it's harder to get um, an aim down sight spawn trap in the offense section, or excuse me, on the defense section. Whereas offense, when we're planting the bombs, and this side of the map, it's very easy to aim down sight and let them spawn in front of you. I don't do that on any other map except for Nuketown. Um, Nuketown, and you'll notice this in, in some of my other uh, older gameplays where I did the full demolition games, um, it's very boring, I think, to watch someone sit down and constantly shoot someone as they spawn entertaining in Nuketown because I can't really go anywhere else. If I try to run around or do something, you know, halfway creative like I do in um, in most of my other gameplays, I'll at least run around the map or keep moving around the spawns. Um, if you do that on Nuketown, you're going to die because there's just, it's such a small map. If you try to get everyone to run around and continually uh, keep moving, uh, eventually you're going to die. Whereas um, in maps like Firing Range or Jungle, some of the maps that they they've also taken out of Demolition, 
Um, you could still move around a little bit, but uh, you, you, didn't, you didn't have to camp in a corner and aim down sight to do the spawn trap. However, if I wanted to, I could always get my team in there and be like, you know, everyone pick a spawn. We're just going to sit here, camp, put your uh, aim down sight, and you're just going to shoot people as they spawn in. And it's not as easy as, as I make it sound just now. I mean, you do have to get you have to get inside the spawn. You have to build up the air support. You have to get the blackbirds. You have to get cover, and you have to be with a good enough team that can handle all that stuff at once. It's people called spawn trapping cheap, but the thing about it is, is that you, you can't just get six random BKs together, hop inside of a game, and can, can call it a spawn trap. It's not that easy. Even me and some of my better players will still fail at a spawn trap. Um, Pushing people so far into their spawn that they cannot move is a much easier said task than done. Um, people try to downplay with saying, "Oh, you got a good kill just because or a good score just because they spawn trapped." Well, go try it, guys. <laughs> it's really not that easy unless you're on a team with someone that knows what they're doing. And I've been doing it for two years now, so I know what I'm doing. The people that I play with generally know what they're doing, and um, we can pull it off a little bit easier than uh, some teams might be able to when they go inside demolition games. And that's why you don't see this on YouTube very often. You, there's very few times where you'll see a successful demolition spawn trap continuously on YouTube. Now, if you go inside a game and you got one lucky game where you got guys on the other team that are triple split screeners with a .5 kill death ratio and they can't even hold their controller, yeah, you can spawn trap them probably. But you'll see sometimes in here, and I, I might just show the pregame lobbies just for this reason, a lot of times we'll be playing entire teams and that's when the games end, is because we'll go in against an entire team, and every single one of them will decide to back out because they don't want to face us. Um, and that happens quite a bit once you bring in the first chopper gunner. Um, you can generally watch in the kill feed. It'll be like half people leaving and then half people replacing them. Um, it's just when people get too much support, you see like there's I think there's like two or three guys left right now. Like we never play full teams. It's very very rare to press the start button and see all success on the team. And you'll see right there two more men connected because two guys left. Um, every time you call in an air support, it just like switch through, switches through the people. Um, people do not stay in games very much, and that's why I wish that this had a better spawn system. Because I know that in Modern Warfare 2, the second someone leaves, like for example on a host migration, instantly when you get out of the host migration, there's someone already connecting and, and joining the game. Which makes it really, really easy to pull off spawn traps. However, in MW2, they got death streaks, which are, which are one of the main killers of spawn trapping in MW2. But it's still uh, successful, and the spawn system in MW2 is a lot worse, as in like they'd they'd pile six guys to one spawn, whereas in Black Ops they switch it up about two or three guys to one spawn, and then they'll um, switch up and put the other two or three guys at a different spawn. Whereas in Modern Warfare 2 it was all time-based. They'd put everyone that spawns in five seconds at one spawn, the next five seconds at a different spawn, and that was a really s silly game mechanic, especially if I've got a chopper gunner up, because I know where they're going to switch to. I know the order and the rotation of demolition spawns in Modern Warfare 2. So if you watch me ever use a chopper gunner in there, I'll put it on one section, then I'll move five seconds later to a different section, and I'll predict the spawns. Even if they've got cold blood, they generally won't be able to get away from me. That's the end of the gameplay, guys. We're getting pretty close to it. At least I leave in about a minute or so. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, if you did, don't forget to click the like button. It helps me out a lot. lets me know you care. And if you want more Black Ops gameplay, like I said before, just leave a comment down below. I do read them all. If you just say, um, I want to see more Black Ops, or I want to see more Modern Warfare 2, or if you want to see a mix, leave that comment too. I'm going to be posting um, the rest of those live commentaries that I've done, which is a few more Modern Warfare 2, but if y'all don't want to see it anymore, I won't post it. I just know that while I was posting a lot of Black Ops gameplay, a lot of people were asking me to put MW2 gameplay. So I know I'll never be able to please everyone, but I'll at least try as much as I can. Um, that get, that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. And